Hey everybody, John Fenn, Church Without Walls International, cwowi.org. And you can go to our website, cwowi.org. Uh, today I'm talking to you about the coronavirus and about house church. And this is really about some things that the Lord said when we started uh, back in, uh, we started in January of 02. And, uh, but the Lord appeared to me twice in, in 2001, and I want to share that with you. And also the fact that if you're interested in meeting in homes and the relationship-based faith that we're talking about, uh, I, if you're receiving this uh, as it's being recorded here in March of 2020, on the 21st of March, which is this Saturday, as I'm recording this, on Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Time U.S., I'm going to do a live web meeting that you can sign up for at our website, cwowi.org. And right on the homepage, you'll see World Update. And, and I'll be sharing about House Church. I'll also be sharing about some of the prophetic things the Lord had told me back in December. I don't share a lot of those things. I don't share them with the public. I just, the basics I don't, because there's everybody and their brothers out there that have no interest in me, no interest in us, uh, you know, people trolling, people whatever, you know. And so it's only those that I really care about and that really care enough to, uh, to get into a relationship with what we're doing uh, that, I, that I open up and, and share a few more things. And a lot of things I just keep to myself because they're a matter of prayer. But on Saturday during this web meeting, I will be uh, sharing some things that the Lord said about this time. And uh, he told me in December. And if you, rem if you know very much of me, you know that normally the Lord comes in January to kind of line out for me what's going to happen during the year, both personally and, and also in the body of Christ and sometimes in the world. But instead, he came in December, like December 1st, and it caught me off guard. Um, but he talked about things that would happen and start in January that would shake the world for about six months. So anyway, I'll, uh, and then some other things in the fall. But I'll, I'll share more of that on Saturday. If you're interested, cwowi.org. And it's free, of course. I mean, there's no sign-up fee or anything. That's, I'm, not, I'm not in the ministry to get rich. I'm not succeeding in not getting rich. Um, but anyway, I want to share with you how we started because a lot of people don't understand or don't, don't know or haven't heard. They see these teachings and they don't understand that we're all about, we're, we are a network of home-based churches. Now, uh, my son tells me in something like 52 nations. It's not top-down control or anything like that. And, and you know, little house churches there were not named Church Without Walls International. Uh, but we are affiliated. We are in relationship with one another in the same way that the Galatians churches were in relationship with the churches of, of Philippi and, and Corinth and, and everything else. They're just in relationship and people going back and forth in communication very often, things of that nature. But how we started was this. I spent 25 years in the auditorium church, everything from a campus minister and associate pastor and senior pastor to then a, and what would be considered an elder and leader in a mega church, which at that time had over 10,000 members. And I was the director of the Bible school that had about 700 people come through in a year. A lot of those part-time, the majority perhaps part-time, but about 700 bodies, you know, in a given year. Uh, passing through that school. So uh, I had a big budget, got to meet some of the people that you see on TV and stuff like that. So I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I'd been every, everything from small town country church to, uh, you know, a leader in a big, in Tulsa, the buckle of the Bible belt, or what used to be, you know, where, uh, you know, people of note have, have come from. Um, but uh, after I, I left there to travel on my own, and then be, I became uh, it entered it, it took a position with a ministry that allowed me to travel all over North America, Canada, the U.S., and talk with leaders all over the world as well. I began searching, you know, how are we doing church? I, there was a dissatisfaction that was growing uh, when I was on staff because I saw people falling through the cracks. And this began to grow. And so finally, by early 2001, I was really seeking the Lord where he was moving. We, I had been to Brownsville, been up to Toronto different stuff like that. And I could see how the Lord had moved on. People had moved on. I talked to people in each community and the effect or no effect that those quote unquote moves of God had on the local population. And it was just, it wasn't scriptural. I mean, in Ephesus, when God came into Ephesus, it affected the economy so much there was a riot because, because the idol sales had fallen so precipitously because so many people were becoming Christians. It's like, where is that in Pensacola? Where is that in Toronto? And just stuff wasn't there. And I began comparing. And uh, in February of 01, I was at Joshua Creek Church in Mississauga, Ontario, uh, February 4th of 2001. And the Lord came. He appeared to me. My eyes were open to his realm right out from the worship team and walked over to me. And he said this, see what I see. People running to and fro to this meeting and that looking for the spectacular, thinking that is supernatural. 
while they miss the supernatural work in their midst, even in their own hearts, for the process of discipleship is supernatural. He said a few more things, and then he, he commented and said this, as it was in the beginning, so it must be now, I'm moving in relationships. And, and a few more things, then he disappeared. And that set me on a search. You know, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, by October, I said, I told my wife, Barb, I said, I said, you know, I don't want to do, I don't want to pastor a church again, but if I did, it would be in our living room, the way Paul did it. Having studied the history of house church, how it began actually with synagogues, uh, real brief history is that the first church in the house was Adam and Eve in the Lord in the garden. And then in Genesis 18, verses, what, 17 through 19, the Lord says, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I'm about to do, seeing that he'll become a great and mighty nation and raise up his children and his household after him in the ways of the Lord? So there the Lord tying revelation in the earth in Genesis 18 to revelation in the earth to the quality of the family life of Abraham. And I had learned that, that when the Greeks invaded Israel, it got to the point within 100 years or so, you couldn't tell a Jew from a Greek, and a holiness movement arose. There were people who separated themselves. They called themselves the separated ones. They separated themselves out. Into, they wanted to divide to, to make sure you could, to, they didn't want to lose their Jewish I identity. Because you see, God had only commanded that they go to temple three times a year. There were no weekly meetings between Moses and this holiness movement. You know, Deuteronomy 16, 16, Exodus 23, it all says just three times a year. And, and yes, the Sabbath meetings, uh, the Sabbath, not meetings, but meetings of the family, the Sabbath times with the family were called holy meetings. They were holy gatherings, but they were just the family. There was no national program to educate the people in the ways of the Lord. There was just a day of rest. Read it for yourself in Exodus chapter 20, verses four through eight. You'll see all God commanded was a day of rest. He said nothing about education, nothing about gathering together. That came about when the separated ones started meeting on Saturdays. They determined they needed 10 adult males to meet in each home. They determined a Sabbath day walk, which would be about a kilometer or about half a mile. And they could have 10 adult males and their families meet in a radius of of the Sabbath day walk. They could rotate homes and, and rotate who leads. Then the separated ones would copy the Torah in and, and scrolls and they would travel around to these gatherings, these gatherings in the home, and, and they would meet on the Saturdays. Well, the separated one is the Hebrew word Pharisee, and gathering is the word synagogue. So that is how the synagogues began. That is how worship on the Sabbath began about 100 or 200 years before Jesus came on the scene in the first century. And so they were still meeting in homes. And I, I studied all this. and I saw how on the day of Pentecost, they just continued meeting in homes. But instead of looking to the Pharisees as their leaders, they looked to these fishermen, these former fishermen and tax collector and, and whatever as their leaders. And there was a synagogue system split because so many of the people were believing in Jesus and looking to the unlearned and uneducated apostles instead of the well-taught Pharisees. And it, it caused tremendous persecution and it spread throughout the, the Roman Empire. I saw all that. And the Lord, when the Lord said that, I, I had made that determination. I, I, would, I would meet in the homes. It wasn't because of persecution or pestilence or anything else. They met in homes because Adam and Eve had met with the Lord in, the, in their homes. And then it had been followed up all the way through the history of Israel, all the way into uh, the history of the Pharisees and the synagogues, uh, you know, 200 BC or so. And, and then November 4th, of uh, 2001, just about a couple weeks after I said I'd be in the living room, I was up in Edmonton, Alberta, on a Sunday night service, and the Lord appeared again. And this was a church that ministered to the down and out, to the former convicts and, and prostitutes and, and uh, drug addicts and such, and the, that's who populated the pews that night. And the Lord came walking over to me, and he said, I love these kinds of people. It was his first comment, I love these kinds of people. He, no facade, no pretense. He just loves the genuineness. They, they knew sin and they knew they'd been redeemed. That, that night, the pastor next to me just fell flat on his face. Three Bible school students we had with us afterwards said, said, John, John, Jesus was here. Did you see him? He walked right past us. He smiled at us. We each saw him. But for me, my strength left me to the point that I fell to my knees. And he came walking over to me and he said, you've been doing the work of an apostle, but now I'm laying hands on you as an apostle for this task. I want you to start a house church and a house church network. And I want you to structure it in such a way to facilitate the development of house churches around the world. I asked him the name. He told me Church Without Walls International. And as we went on, I, I, I was a little bit, I don't say in disbelief, but I was earning a happy living and a good living, what I was doing. And the idea of going to 10 people in a living room just wasn't appealing, you know. I knew automatically I'd probably have to get a job uh, to, to build up this house church and house church network, and I'd have to work a regular job and then do that. And, you know, all these things were processing. But I said, why? Why do you want me to do this? And he said this, it's against a time to come. 
be a resource for them, for it's against a time to come. And that against a time to come means that it's a treasure, it's a storehouse uh, against a time to come for a future time. We're just touching on the beginnings of it right now as I'm recording this in the midst of the coronavirus uh, and, and people not being allowed to go out in public and not meeting in, in groups larger than 10 people. And our house church, even our house churches are, are doing more web meetings and things like that to, to honor those requests of the authorities. Um, but because it's not persecution, it's for public health. And so we have no problem honoring that, of course. And, and that point, though, that it's against a time to come. That's why I'm doing this Saturday. That's why I do these things every Wednesday morning. Uh, U.S. time. It's because he spoke to me a couple years ago to start doing this, to teach people the, the balance of the Spirit and the, and the Word, and, and to understand that it's relationship-based faith. Family, friends, neighbors, co-workers are the relationships you find in Scripture. And, and meeting in homes uh, is, is, again, going from Adam and Eve and the Lord in the garden. It flows from there. It flows from family. And it's investing in Christ in each of us. So I hope that um, that you will read my book, Return of the First Church, which I can upload to, you know, I've got an RTF of whatever, a document version on my computer. And if you can't go to our website or you're, you know, it doesn't work that way, you can email me at cwowi at aol.com, cwowi at aol.com. And I can upload either Pursuing the Seasons of God, which are some of the earlier visitations I had, and or Return of the First Church, which is my journey into church in the home and provide some balance and stuff. And then we've got 10 free videos on our website about question and answer about house church. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share that, just kind of bring everyone up to speed. That's what we're all about. Uh, we're, we're just a house church network, a relationship based faith. And much like the churches were related in Paul's network, if you will, that they had their own identities, their own personalities, but they were still related and on the same spiritual page. So that's what we're all about. Anyway, um, you know, it's what Matthew 25 says. Jesus said he's returning for a church that is, uh, when he said, I was hungry, naked, thirsty, a stranger, sick and in prison. You fed me, clothed me, watered me, took me in and visited me. You know, that's a real life body of Christ. That's what we're all about. Uh, and, and we're entering into some of those times. This, this segment will pass, this, this season will pass, and return to a normal, but there are all from here on out, there's a lot of little birth pangs, you know, a birth pang rest, birth pang rest. So I'll share more on Saturday for those who are interested. And if not, sign up for the week. I share a lot on my monthly e-newsletter. It comes out every month and my weekly thoughts. So sign up for there uh, as well. All right, God bless. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.